Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will actually continue with the SL2 representation theory and observe some basic facts about uh, SL2 representations. So, let us begin with uh, finite dimensional representation of SL2. Let us call it uh, capital V, capital V being a given finite dimensional representation of SL2. So, then using Wiles complete reducibility, we know that uh, V can be written as uh, direct sum of uh, irreducible finite dimensional representations of SL2. So, since direct sum actually commutes, V direct sum W is isomorphic to W direct sum V. So, we can arrange this V as V M1 let us say K1 copies of M1 appears and so on and V M R K R copies of V M R appears in V as some ads. Okay. So, without loss of generality uh, because all this uh, direct sum commutes, we can assume that M1 is strictly greater than M2, strictly greater than M3 and so on. Okay. So, this basic assumption we can actually make. So, now what we are interested in uh, understanding, so we want to understand that when given irreducible module V of M occurs as a sum and inside capital V. So, that is the first question. Okay. So, question 1. So, given V of M when it occurs in V as a sub -and. So, is there any easy combinatorial way to determine this? So, that is the basic question. So, give characterization of multiplicity of V of M inside capital V. So, that is the second question. Okay, More or less both are relevant. So, give explicit formula for computing multiplicity of V of M that means how many times it occurs inside the direct sum. So, this K1 etcetera KR they are called multiplicities of this respective V of M1 etcetera V of MR. So, give explicit formula for computing multiplicity of V, M, v of M in capital V of course, in terms of capital V. So, this is something uh, that we would like to do it in this class. Okay. So, let us make uh, some observations uh, about uh, given general representation with respect to this uh, given decomposition of V into direct sum of irreducible modules uh, of SL2. So, first thing to notice, okay, let me let me state it as a proportion. So, all these are immediate observations from uh, two important uh, facts that we proved about SL2. One is we have the explicit classification of all irreducible finite dimensional modules of SL2. So, that is given by this uh, uh, V of M, where M is running over all non-negative integers and we have complete reducibility of, of any finite dimensional representations of SL2. So, using this we want to conclude few stuff. Okay, let us first recall uh, what we know about uh, a given finite dimensional irreducible representation of uh, SL2. So, let us say M is a given uh, non-negative integer. So, then we have this uh, irreducible module associated with this M, we call it Vm. So, we know that it has a very nice uh, this uh, weight string basis. Okay. So, there is this basis which is which we can call it as a string basis because it has a nice property. So, let us call it V naught, V 1, etcetera, V m whose h weights will be given by whose h weights are given by m, m minus 2 and so on up to minus m. So, basically all the h weights are they are unbroken chain starting from m to ending with minus m. 
So, whose difference all will be like successive difference will be just 2. So, in particularly all these weights have same parity as m. Okay. So, note that all weights have same parity as the highest weight that is m as the highest weight which is m. Okay. So, now using this uh, and Wiles complete reducibility, it is immediate that, so let me make the first statement. So, this is indeed observations, but let us state it as a proportion. So, you have the action of H. So, H acts diagonizably on capital V because V can be written as direct sum of irreducible representation. On irreducible representation, H acts diagonally. So, one can immediately conclude this from Wiles theorem. But anyway, we proved this in some different ways. Okay. So, this is the first uh, important observation. Not only that it acts diagonally and all the eigenvalues, okay, all eigenvalues or the weights okay h eigen values are called weights of this representation so they are all integers so that's a important observation this is a and this is b and and if we take this other operator x and y they act nilpotently on capital V. Now, you can explicitly compute what will be the nilpotency on the irreducible module using that and using this explicit uh, uh, multiplicities k1 etcetera kr, you will be able to compute nilpotency of these operators on any given capital V. Okay. So, now not only this, uh, we also have this very important uh, property of the weight multiplicities so that is the symmetric property. So, if we call uh, Vk, so let us write V as uh, direct sum of Vk where k runs over Ej. So, this is just the weight, weight space decomposition that means each Vk, so these are all weight spaces corresponding to the action of uh, uh, H. Okay. So, more explicitly V k is given by those vector in capital V such that H v is given by k v for all okay, k v. So, we know that this is indeed called Eigen space or the weight space of H. the dimension of this v k, they are called weight multiplicities or the weights, multiplicity of, of the weight space v k, which is also called weight of course, weight of v k. So, now uh, one can easily observe that dimension of V k is same as dimension of V minus k and this is true for all k integer. So, why this is true? Because this is true for irreducible module. So, if we take uh, all uh, weight spaces of this irreducible model V m, we observe that all of them are actually one dimensional and whenever some weight k appears in V m, then the minus k also appears and the dimension of that is also 1. So, because of that you can immediately conclude the kth weight space of V k has same dimension as uh, minus kth weight space of V. So, now uh, we can also actually uh, try to compare the weight multiplicities. 
So, it is immediate that if we take these weight multiplicities, let us uh, only focus on the even and odd parts separately. Okay. So, then you can easily see that the dimension of V naught will be greater than or equal to dimension of V2 which is greater than or equal to dimension of V4 and so on. Similarly, if we take uh, the dimension of V1 which will be greater than or equal to dimension of V3 and so on. And this is again very clear from the uh, Wiles uh, complete disability. So, let us draw some picture then that actually uh, will give you proof of this okay, immediately. So, let us say that uh, we have decomposed V into V of m 1 direct sum k 1 times and so on direct sum V of m r direct sum k r times. So, as before without loss of generality we are going to assume that m 1 is greater than etcetera greater than m r they are all distinct and strictly uh, decreasing. So, now if we take the for example, the very first copy of this uh, V m 1 direct sum k 1. So, what we get? So, we get some picture like this. So, all this uh, V m, so they just appear here. Okay. So, this is just copy of V m 1 and so on copy of V m 1 and uh, the number of times it appears is k 1 k 1 times it appears and you have the weight spaces that actually just get decomposed. Okay. So, here the top weight m 1 appears and here the lowest weight minus m 1 appears and the second level you have m 1 minus 2 and here, uh, here as well you have m 1 and m 1 minus 2 and so on and then you have minus m 1 here. Okay. So, this is how this entire copies of V m 1 appears inside capital V. Okay. It is just a pictorial interpretation. So, now uh, if we go to the second level, so let us uh, use different color. So, we go to let us say second level V m 2 direct sum k 2. Okay. So, then V m 2 may appear somewhere and then it may actually give you something like this. Okay. So, you have V m 2 copies of V m 2 and then how many times it appears? It appears k 2 times and then here the top weight will be m 2 here m 2 and then the bottom last weight will be minus m 2 and minus m 2. So, now like this you have all these modules and then finally, you end up getting something like this V V m r. So, this will be V m r, V m r and so on. So, this will be m r and then m r and then minus m r minus m r. So, this is how the combinatorial picture actually looks like. Okay. So, this is how capital V is decomposed as direct sum of irreducible modules. But then uh, this is actually kind of working backward. If we know this decomposition, now we can get all information about capital V. For example, if we fix some uh, weight A and then ask, so what will be the actually uh, dimension of that weight space V A. So, let us try to compute it using this uh, diagram. So, you can see that, so this weight may occur somewhere here. Okay. So, this could be the weight that corresponds to A. So, then if I take this particular stripe which corresponds to the weight A, so then it may occur in many different uh, irreducible summands. Okay. If we put them together, then we get the dimension of V A. Okay. So, it can appear inside uh, the first component, it may appear in the second component and so on. So, now if I 
fix uh, one of those things, let us say one square like this, where this A appears, okay. So, that is going to contribute that particular V M i that summand is going to contribute one dimension towards the dimension of V a. So, that means what will be the dimension of V a? So, if you just uh, think about it, it is very clear that the dimension of V a where a is just uh, one of the h weight, then that is going to be exactly equal to. So, you collect all possible you collect all possible uh, these uh, mi's okay so that is nothing but the irreducible uh, model that appears in capital v so what is exactly that so this is a direct summand okay so this is going to be so to collect this va we need to look at the particular uh, irreducible copy okay so that means if this a appears there then we have this uh, obvious uh, relations so let us say a appears in vm so then that immediately gives that this m must be greater than or equal to mod a because m is the highest weight so if a appears or minus a also appears inside vm that means both a and minus a should be smaller than m so that is the first condition and then as we observed all the weights that occur inside given irreducible module they all have same parity as m so if we take any weight in that appears inside this irreducible module vm that should have same parity as m so that tells you that if we take uh, this a if it appears in vm then that's a and m must have same parity so m and a must have same parity okay so in other words one can say that m minus a is even so this is equivalent to saying m minus a is even so now we can actually easily count what will be the dimension of a because each one that is that each m that satisfies this property that comes from this collection is going to give you one dimension contribution to V a. So, that means this dimension of V a is going to be the number of direct summands that are isomorphic to V m ok, isomorphic to v m where this m should have satisfy this property m is greater than or equal to mod a and m minus a must be even ok. If these two properties are satisfied then that contributes one dimension to v a. So, you count all of them then that is will be the dimension of this v a ok. So, this is indeed very immediate uh, important observation uh, that we can make. So, now uh, using this you can easily conclude that this uh, inequalities are satisfied ok. So, if we take for example, dimension of V 0. So, that is going to be the number of direct summands isomorphic to V m where m greater than or equal to 0 that is obviously uh, satisfied but m minus a being even is just saying that m is even number ok. Now, if you go to uh, dimension of v 2 then that puts the condition that m must be greater than or equal to 2 and m minus 2 is even that is same as saying m is even. So, every time you can see that the numbers of that such m's going down ok. So, that actually tells you that the dimension of v 0 is greater than or equal to dimension of v 2 and so on. Similarly, you can conclude that dimension of V1 greater than or equal to dimension of V3 and so on. So, now uh, let us have a closer look at this uh, uh, number of summands that uh, we are actually getting. So, if we take uh, 
uh, this uh, k1 etc kr that are that are also we are interested in actually computing okay so let us actually count this number of summands that are isomorphic to vm so this is exactly the multiplicity of vm inside capital v so the mul the word multiplicity is overused it is used for for the dimension of the weight space it is also used for the number of times vm occur inside capital v and so on okay so you should not get uh, confused so now uh, what is this exactly so now if you go with this formula you can easily see that the dimension of vm indeed actually captures something uh, very closer to that number okay so let's look at the dimension vm so the dimension vm so what it is it is the number of direct summands isomorphic to vm so where m greater than or equal to that mod a is already satisfied okay so let's say number of v of m dash like that appears in capital v where this m dash is actually greater than or equal to m and m dash minus m is even okay so this is what uh, you are getting for the dimension of vm and similarly if you look at dimension of vm plus 2 then again you are going to get very similar formula okay so now using this formulas or maybe like one can use the diagram uh, to say very explicitly what is happening okay so let us say i am interested in actually counting uh, this k1 okay how many times this v of m1 that occurs inside capital v so that if you think about it so that is exactly captured from the dimension of this uh, v m1 okay so if you take this particular space so this is what that actually captures the number of times this uh, v of m1 that appears inside capital v okay this is the dimension of vm so now if we go to actually uh, v of m2 okay so how one can actually uh, calculate this k2 so let us see if we are interested in this calculating k2 then what we need to do we need to actually first see how so we are we are interested in calculating everything in terms of capital v so we have to say everything in terms of actually weight spaces of capital v so that will be sufficient so now let's look at this particular stripe where m2 actually occurs as the weight okay so this is going to be v m2 so that is the weight weight space of capital v corresponding to the weight m2 now if we take this stripe this particular stripe so then you can see that this k2 number of copies of vm2 appear somewhere here so this is uh, so this is actually is what contributes to the uh, the copies of actually vm2 but there are some extra dimensions that 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 are actually coming from this so some part of this is actually giving something extra so how one can actually subtract that extra from this uh, uh, from this entire thing so that we can get this so this is just a inclusion exclusion you can see that to get the number of times that k2 so let me write the formula here so this k2 is exactly equal to so you look at this entire space so that is the dimension of v m2 okay so this is the whole space so that is actually giving you the dimension of uh, weight space of capital v associated with m2 so now if i want to subtract this part 
So, then that is exactly the number of times k 1 that appears. So, that for example, can be captured by just subtracting this v m 2 and then v m 2 plus 2. So, you can go just m 2 plus 2 which is just a little higher weight that appears here. So, this is the weight m 2 then you go to the weight m 2 plus 2 and the dimension of that m 2 plus 2 that cannot come from something uh, irreducible modules that is uh, smaller than uh, smaller than m 2 ok. So, that means, so that weight space contribution cannot be obtained from the smaller things. So, it has to come from something bigger. So, that part if you just subtract from entire thing then you will be exactly getting the number of irreducible modules that uh, that number k 2 that the multiplicity of that inside capital V ok. And this, this thing works for all other things. So, from that you can easily see that the number of summands that are isomorphic to V m. So, that is going to be exactly you take the total multiplicity of m inside capital V. So, which is what somewhat partially contributes to the weight spaces corresponding to this uh, top weight spaces corresponding to V m. Okay. From that, if you just delete which is which cannot be obtained from the lower irreducible modules. So, the part of the weight space which cannot be obtained from the lower irreducible modules, then you get exactly the number of summands that are isomorphic to Vm. Okay. So, this is again very easy formula that one can actually prove using the observation. So, now uh, it is also immediate that if you are interested in counting total number of uh, uh, summands, okay. so the number of total number of okay, total number of summands that appears inside your uh, uh, module capital V. So, that means, this is the k 1 plus etcetera plus k r. So, what is this going to be? So, so this is going to be exactly the dimension of V 0 plus the dimension of V 1. So, that is because if I take one irreducible module V m, okay, let us let us take it here. So, if this is V m, so, now depending upon the parity of m, so either this particular irreducible summand contribute to the weight space corresponding to 0 or 1. Suppose m is even, then the there will be one weight space corresponding to 0 inside this V of m. So, that is going to contribute to capital V. If m is odd, then there is a one dimensional weight space corresponding to the weight 1 that is going to contribute to the weight space of capital V which corresponds to 1. So, that means each summand V m contributes to either to the 0th weight space or the 1th weight space because they are mutually uh, disjoint. So, their sum is going to give you exactly the total number of summands that we are interested in. So, if you are interested in uh, for example, proving some module is irreducible, so you can actually try to compute this number dimension V naught plus dimension V n. If you can say that that number is just 1 that proves that the given module is irreducible. So, this is uh, something like that we are getting it for free. So, moreover, uh, we can also actually uh, put all these things together and then say something more about the multiplicities. So, this is uh, from the combinatorial view, view point ok, from combinatorial view point, we can say that all these numbers that actually occur here, 
they are all having this important property of the So from the combinatorics point of view, we can also see that if given finite dimensional representation capital V and then if we take the multiplicities of uh, that capital V, then uh, the following sequences. So let us say this dimension Vk where k is odd and the dimension Vk where k is even. So these two sequences the sequences. So, these are actually satisfy this following properties. So, both of them are unimodal and also symmetric and it is symmetric about the origin 0. Okay. So, we already proved that dimension of Vk is same as dimension of V minus k. So, that takes care of this symmetric about origin and why this is unimodal. So, unimodal is exactly translates to these inequalities. So, basically you have actually both uh, positive and uh, negative weights. So, you can see that. So, this first condition indeed tells you that. So, dimension V naught is, is actually bigger than dimension V2 and as well as bigger than dimension V minus 2. And similarly, you can go down. So, the dimension V2 is uh, bigger than dimension V4, which is again bigger than dimension V minus 2, which is bigger than minus 4. So, basically, one can write it as this one, e one inequality one sequence of inequalities, but if you just use this symmetric property, you can see that it is indeed unimodal. So, yes, positive real number sequence or any sequence of real number, it is called unimodal if it goes up, up to some stage and then comes down from that stage. Okay. So, let me make a very precise definition. Yes, a real sequence, let us say a1 etc an is said to be unimodal if there exists k of course between 1 to n such that so up to that k it increases and then after that it start decreasing okay so if we have actually a sequence satisfying this property then you call that sequence as unimodal. So, if the sequence is symmetric about 0, then of course, uh, you have like you have plotted. So, this is actually origin. You plot the sequence here and here and then obviously, it is symmetric about origin means. So, the numbers a k is same as a n minus k. Okay. And now, you symmetric about origin actually implies unimodal. Okay, that is obvious. So, basically the second statement that we have about this inequalities is translated uh, in, in combinatorics as unimodal. So, in the next class, uh, I will actually give one uh, immediate application of this SL2 representation theory in combinatorics and demonstrate uh, the power of uh, this uh, theory. I okay. will stop here, we will meet in the next class.